fight and victory had been won. It was called El Alameda. It was a moment of light in the midst of the darkness of a war which till then had seemed lit to be little more than a catalogue of disasters for our country. We had Dunkirk, a miracle indeed, when an army which had been devastated by the defeats in France had been snatched from the beaches while leaving behind all but personal equipment and not bringing back much of that. Of course, we had the victory of the Battle of Britain when the Royal Air Force had ensured that we could not be bombed with impunity by death. And with that, the threat of an imminent invasion had been removed. And yet our people still huddled in shelters as the German Luftwaffe pounded our cities night after night. In the Battle of the Atlantic, the Royal Navy struggled to keep the vital shipping lanes open, while the magnitude of the losses threatened to strangle our efforts to continue the war. And in the Far East, of which little was known, an army which regarded itself as forgotten was struggling in the jungles with its monsoon rains and its insects and disease contain the victorious and fanatical Japanese armies, which then stood at the gates of India. It is little wonder that Winston Churchill, in his inimitable star, was to say of the campaign in North Africa, before Alamein we never had a victory, after Alamein we never had a defeat. For together with the failure of the German army to capture Stalingrad, this victory in the desert of North Africa was to mark the turning point in the Second World War. Of course, there had been earlier victories in the desert and in Abyssinia, as the war had seesawed backwards and forwards. But none had proved decisive in the need to safeguard our vital interests in the Middle East and our lines of communication through the Suez Canal. Time and again it seemed that we would be overwhelmed as the courageous German and Italian armies under Field Marshal Rommel threatened to overwhelm our best efforts. That is, until under the leadership of General, later Field Marshal Montgomery, the 8th Army engaged them at El Alamein and won through with the vital support of the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force. That is why the church bells rang out. For the spirit which had sustained the people of this land, both service and civilian, to survive, could now at last be translated into hope of ultimate victories. But if that was an occasion of national rejoicing, let us remember that El Alameen is the personal story of those of you who were there. It is the life and death struggle of those who took part in the desert war. Few of us can possibly enter into these experiences, for we can only imagine the searing heat by day and the bitter cold by night. The all-pervasive sand which seemed to carry men and equipment, and with it the incessant flies and insects which made life a torture. Yet in the midst of it all, there was the spirit of comradeship and the determination to succeed. And as a back class, there was the ear-shattering noise and the confusion of battle. This was the war experienced by these young men from Britain and the dominions and territories overseas, the countries of today's Commonwealth. Indeed, in 30 Corps, there were five Commonwealth divisions, of which only one was British, and that was the 51st Highland Division. Reconstituted and now ready to avenge St. Family under the command of Neil Wilmer. And yet, even in these circumstances, these men.
they blessed moments. There was humor, as in the fifth black watch, held up by a wire entanglement where the battalion barber had been appropriately entrusted with the wire cutters and was encouraged with words, get a move on, John. You're no cutting pair now. You will realize that's not the precise invitation in deference to this place of the <laughs>